Hey, welcome back to the Midday Q&A. I'm your host, the Duck Man. Back today with my 1966 or 67 Volkswagen bus, also known as Gregory. Now, we're still trying to figure out exactly what year it is, and I think I may have figured out exactly what makes this bus 66 versus 67. A lot of people have sent me some really, really good ideas, but 66 and 67 was kind of a weird year where at the end of the 66 model line and the beginning of the 67 line, they did share some of the same parts. But one such thing that they didn't share was the dual circuit brake master cylinder. 1967s had them only. And the only reason I discovered that, I didn't think about it earlier, is I was looking at the two wiring harness charts, looking at the two of them, the dual circuit wiring harness has an extra few wires that go to the master cylinder because there's two brake light switches that are on it. And that's in case one of the circuits fails, the pressure can still activate the brake lights with the still functioning brake circuit. Looking at the two harnesses, it, the light bulb went off of my head. The harnesses are otherwise damn near identical, damn near identical. So I decided, well, since my floors are out and the master cylinder is right there, why don't I go ahead and put my own two eyes on the master cylinder and see if it's a dual circuit or a single circuit and see if there's a wiring harness that's connected to it and whether or not it has those extra wires. So anyways, today I went ahead and pressure washed out the bus and uh, you probably noticed the 13 has gone off the front of it. I went ahead and rubbed it right off of there. Turns out it's a little scratched in the middle underneath the 13. So it's gonna <laughs> need a little bit of paint on there because uh, that paint just kind of rubbed right through. It wasn't very thick to begin with. So anyways, I'll hit that to stop it from rusting. God forbid Gregory rusts anymore. <laughs> but the reason why all the doors and everything is open on is because I've been letting the air go through it. Tonight, I'm probably not going to recover the bus. I'm going to try to keep him um, just open and let him dry out as much as possible. The humidity here in Florida has been like 35% with a temperature between 78 and 83 degrees. It's just been absolutely gorgeous. And I know it's not going to stay like this. I really know it's not going to stay like this, but here's hoping. Here's hoping. We did have one summer a few years ago that stayed pretty nice. Well, it was a roller coaster ride. You'd have a, a nice four or five days, and you'd have a hot four or five days. Nice four or five days hot. <laughs> but anyway, let's go ahead and hop inside right after the intro. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Pluck that dingle belly down there next to the subscribe button. That way you get updates every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out duckshit.net. That is my website where you'll find all of my social media links. My Instagram, for some reason right now, is blowing up. In the last couple days, I took on a few hundred new uh, followers and just... Wow. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for hitting me up over there and uh, continue to, you know, give me that follow because I've been posting a lot of behind the scenes photos of the stuff that I've been working on. Anyway, I'm doing too much of this. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, I did have my photography light set up in here, but it's been acting weird, and it did certainly crap out. But the master cylinder reservoir is right there, so we can get a good look at this master cylinder. Now, the first thing you can see, as dark as it is, let's see if the night vision does any... Note to self, the power button is right next to the night shot button, so don't hit the wrong button. <laughs> Anyways, you can get a much, much better look at the, the uh, master cylinder now. And you can see it's got three out outputs on it, and the brake light switches in the back. This is a single-circuit master cylinder. Now, there's always that great possibility that somebody, you know, went ahead and, and changed it from a dual circuit to a single circuit because it really is easy to unbolt. But the wiring harness, which does appear to be old and original, is equipped with only three wires going to the master cylinder, not six that it would be required for dual circuit. This bus is probably a 66. How about that? <laughs> I don't know why I closed that. I actually wanted to show you the dashboard. It just looks completely different since I've hosed it down. Let's turn the night shot back off. It's uh, still rusty, but clean. And actually, it's kind of nice. I kind of like the patina on it the way it is. There's a good possibility I might just clean it up and, um, you know, clear coat it. I don't know. We'll see how I feel about that. It doesn't have any, any rust holes in it that I've found yet. But along the edge here, there probably is. So when I pull these windows out, we'll figure that one out. But that's a little bit down the road. But as I said, I pressure washed the inside out here. It, uh, it was dirty. It was a lot of crust that came out of this. And a lot of handfuls of just rust crumbles. Just everything was just crumbly. This uh, center section floor in here, it looks like it's only bad through a strip right here and on the end. 
So what I'll probably do is I'll cut it right about here to there and just replace that section of it. The front is in okay shape, so it can stay. And also some people asked about the bumpers. The bumpers, I had showed them quickly before that there was some rust through on them. Now bumpers are actually usually kind of heavy steel. Well, as far as Volkswagens are concerned, they're pretty heavy. And this one had some rust holes through it. Yeah. Yeah, I was a little crushed here with some rust holes. Now, because it's such heavy steel, I should be able just to, to hammer this out and fill it, you know, with just some, some uh, welds. That shouldn't be too big of a deal. So it doesn't look that badly compromised, to be quite honest with you. I mean, there's holes, but that can be fixed. So it should save me a couple hundred bucks of uh, trying to replace this bumper. It's also got a little tow hitch in it. I'll probably never use it. I'll get rid of that for sure, because if I ever do pull anything with this uh, bus, I'll use a proper tow bar, not something on a... On a flimsy bumper. <laughs> the last big question of the day. Everybody wanted to know what those signs said that consisted of the floor. And I don't know. I don't even know if I have them laying in the right order. But uh, there's an A and L, a T. Well, it looks like it might be a sliver of an R or an H. A, D, I. I have no idea what that is. E, R, N, A. So if anybody has some kind of a boggle translator or anagram reader or some kind of something, maybe you could figure something out. But I haven't been able to put together as to what this might have been. This uh, panel, by the way, came from elsewhere inside the bus. It was uh, glued down over the engine compartment over one of those rust holes. I think that's where it was anyway. I seem to remember peeling it off of something around the engine area. There might be some more panels like that around. I'll be looking for them, see if there's anything else with lettering on them. But I don't know what that could possibly be. Anybody has any suggestions? Try to help me out here. <laughs> that one's definitely got me stumped. All right, moving forward. I've since loaded a whole bunch of crap back inside of here since um, everything started to dry out because I just want to leave it in here for the night. Uh, I probably shouldn't have put it all in there yet because the floor is still a little damp, but hey, I'm going to replace the floor anyway, so if a little bit more rust happens on it, I don't really care. But up on the ceiling in here, you can see the big difference because before there was like these stalactites that were hanging down off of everything. There's like this yellow paint that really wasn't sticking well and it was peeling pretty bad. And on that wall over there, you can see where the pressure washer went side to side and it blasted off some of that paint that's on there. So I'll probably take the rest of it off once I get the rest of the bus cleaned out again. And uh, I'll go over it again, probably with a light sander because the pressure washer was working, but it was just too much, too much effort. So I'll take that all off of there and then we'll properly patch it and paint it now a lot of people asked what color was this bus originally and I really I really don't know red and cream appears to be what it is now but after doing a little bit of uh, pressure washing to the inside particularly on the dashboard it started to come up the same red as Ruby you see it blasted off some of that uh, white or cream colored paint it just blasted it right off of there and underneath was a color just like Ruby's got in fact it even shows that on the inside of the doors so that could very well be the original color of this, this bus. I don't know for certain. I really don't. It was a 1968 color, of course, for, for the Fastback. I don't know if it was a 1966-67 color, since this bus, I believe now to be a 66, which means I gotta go back and update all of my social media links, all my videos and anything that says 66, I gotta change it all to 67. <laughs> well, you know what? I still gotta get that VIN tag from Mary. I guess that would be what truly, truly answers everything. But yeah. That's where we're at. Now that I've got all this area in here clean, it doesn't look as daunting as it did before. Still need to fix that shifter area though. I mean, of the, of the frame, that's probably the worst. And I have never seen one of those rust out before. Never. Birds flying really close to me. I'm sorry, I got distracted. It landed like right behind me. I could have stepped on one of them. I don't even know if you heard them chirping. You might have. They were being extremely loud. All right, well that uh, shifter tunnel right there, the whole top of it is all rusted off. I gotta see if CT Moog can get me a good picture of his with some dimensions. If you can take some pictures and uh, you know lay a tape measure next to it or something, so I can figure out exactly where this um, little hole is supposed to be located at, and then I'm gonna have to refabricate it. I have not found a patch panel for this. I don't think one exists. All the big manufacturers don't seem to have them, and I tried looking at some of the uh, doom buggy places to see if they could use like a shifter box that they put on a doom buggy or something, but they're not big enough. So, yep, there's going to be some uh, fab that goes into that. I'm going to have to completely rebuild that little box. But yeah, there it is. That's what we've got. Tomorrow, we should be doing some more work on this thing. 
uh, if not this, uh, for certain, Eleanor. Eleanor will be getting some welding work done. I should be able to start in the morning on her because I'm going to have a little more time. That's the little bird that was behind me a minute ago. He uh, landed behind me again. I wonder if he's a baby. Maybe he's a fledgling fresh out of the nest. Oh, he is! Look at the little guy. Oh, he looks just like the little guy I got a couple years ago over here. Man, you better find a place to go tonight. You better find a place to go. There's a ton of cats in this neighborhood. Can you fly? Not really, huh? Oh, you tried though. That was a good effort you made. You poor little guy. Oh, don't make me have to take you in. I don't want to have to take you to the wildlife center. Come on, fly, little guy. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Oh, you poor little guy. And he must have just jumped out of the tree. I don't know why he didn't wait until morning, but he just jumped out. I'm sure of it. You poor little critter. All right, I'll be keeping an eye on you as I pack everything up here. Where the hell did you go? Damn, you're invisible on the ground. Ah, you be a good little critter. We'll come check on you in a few minutes. All right, one of the other questions I got is, you know, how much pocket change did you get in there? And uh, it's kind of a lot. Or at least as far as what I found on the cards were concerned. I can't tell what all the coins are because some of them are like glued together. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of cat piss. Throw it in here. And then throw our coins right into that. Because as we've learned, it will ungreen copper. It'll remove the corrosion right from it. And it'll make copper, which is what most coins have a base of. Along with some other metals. Oh, look at it, it's actually foaming. It doesn't normally foam. It's probably because there's some rust powder stuck to the coins. Anyways, we're going to let that sit overnight, and then we'll come back to that one in the morning, and we'll answer that question for you in an upcoming Q&A video. Ha <laughs> ha! Thanks for watching. Damn, mosquitoes are all over me. Well, I think that's enough for today. As always, you know, like, comment, subscribe, pluck the dingle belly. I hope that little bird, wherever he's at right now, uh, finds himself a little home. So I'm already hearing rustling in the bushes of uh, the cats that come around here at night. And there's been a lot of cats around here lately. A lot of cats around here lately. My security cameras and my motion sensors keep tripping, keep getting tripped off by cats. There's just friggin' cats everywhere. Anyways, <laughs> I guess that's a good test for my security system. It shows that even a little animal, you know, this big can set it off. We're going to continue to work on the bus. We're going to let him dry out. Tomorrow we're going to be working on Eleanor. We're going to try to get them hinges situated on the passenger's door at least. I'd like to see at least one side at least finished enough. You know, proof of concept to show that it works. I got itchy balls all of a sudden. Man. I'd like to have a little proof of concept that works so that way I can then move over to the driver's side and then copy it. A lot of people said that I couldn't make it work or that those hinges I got are completely the wrong style for what I need to do and, and I disagree. I think they're going to work just fine. If they're going to be tight, it's going to be a snug fit, but I think they're going to work just fine. Anyways, thanks you guys for watching. Duckshit.net for all my social media links. I mean really, do it. Duckshit.net. Visit the website. Check out the stuff that's on there. You want to send me a donation? There's a PayPal page for that. You want to join me on Patreon? That's right, I have a Patreon page. You can join me on that just the same. Follow me on, on follow me up on soap stuff. Follow me up on Instagram if you'd like. Uh, hit me up over on Twitter. Maybe I'll start using that thing again. <laughs> thanks for watching, you guys. Really appreciate it. And um, we'll see you tomorrow. Well, I just decided to have one more look around for that little bird, and I don't see him. So hopefully he, he managed to get strong enough to uh, take off and fly. Fly away, little guy. Godspeed. I hear the, uh, the parents over here, that little chirping sounds. I don't know how well this microphone picks them up, but the little tiny chirping sounds. Um, in fact, there's one of them right there. I don't know if you can see. That's probably one of the parents. Let's see if I can zoom in. Not even sure if I'm looking at him or not. Yep, that was him. Gone now. Don't see the baby anywhere. He might be in the next yard. <laughs>